My name is Dr. Robert Smith. I am an associate professor at the University of Ottawa. Uh, my surname is Smith with a question mark because I have a very, very common name. And my research involves studying infectious diseases using mathematics, and so that means I look at the spread of disease from person to person, but I also look at zombies and Bieber fever because those I find are a very fun way of understanding how disease works. My career is a professor. I work a lot with biologists. Uh, we have to have a conversation about a disease to create a mathematical model. And then we analyze the mathematically and then we bring it back to the biologists. I use zombies to try and understand the mechanics of how you would build a mathematical model of a disease. What we have to do is figure out how a disease works in the first place, what all the pieces are that make the mathematical model, then we do our mathematical analysis, we come to a conclusion, and then that conclusion tells us things that we wouldn't have learned otherwise. And so what zombies do are they teach us the, exactly the kind of thing that you would have to do for the next pandemic. When a brand new disease comes, you can't just take some model of malaria and adapt it, you have to build it from the ground up. And this is exactly the kind of thing we see with zombies. And the nice thing about zombies too is that we refined it many, many times. We looked at uh, treatment, we looked at quarantine, we looked at impulsive attacks, and seeing what different methods worked and what didn't. And it allows us to refine our model over and over again, which is exactly the kind of process that you have to do with any kind of new disease. In a global sense, I'm probably comparing zombies spreading throughout the world and making the zombie apocalypse to perhaps the spread of bird flu, which is at the moment a very low level disease, but we're expecting this to mutate, and if it mutates it might be a global disease. And a global disease that's airborne like that might travel very, very quickly. In the old days diseases travelled about, I think the Black Plague travelled about five kilometres a day, which was pretty fast for its time, but there we had horses and so on bringing the disease around, now we have international travel things can move very, very quickly, and they move fast via aeroplanes and ships and so on, and then they move locally, and the kind of sort of spread you would see for zombies is just like that. Mostly it's sort of zombies infecting their neighbours, but sometimes you get a zombie on a plane and then, you know, the plane gets infected, the plane lands and so on, and you've started a new pandemic. And I think that bird flu might be like that, that if the virus mutates in the right way, then we may see an airborne disease moving around very, very quickly, and that would be very similar to the way zombies spread. If you're trying to understand how to prevent the spread of disease, what you need to know is sort of what's the threshold for a disease taking off or dying away. And there's a, a thing called R0, it's mentioned in the movie Contagion, and it's the number of secondary infections. Uh, one of the interesting things about, say, Bieber fever was, of course we know Bieber fever is very infectious, right? Justin Bieber is very popular, young girls and boys as well, in fact, they get so into Justin Bieber, and then so does everybody else. You know, all their friends become into it and so on. And so you see the spread of this happening very, very quickly. And we liken that to measles in a school, which spreads very, very fast. And so there's this sort of local spread. But what we also saw was that the media gets involved. And the media is something that hasn't really been studied very much. We just sort of think that media exists sort of on the side. And what we've seen lately is that there's potentially a huge impact of media on the spread of disease. So if we look at Bieber fever, which is of course a fun thing to look at, you can see that there's very intense local spread, but there's also this sort of weaker media effect, so that if you're in a school where nobody's into Justin Bieber, but you start seeing clips and you start reading magazines and so on, and you're seeing all this Bieber stuff, you might get into Justin Bieber yourself. <laughs> you start listening to his songs, you like them, then you can start spreading it to your friends. What this does is it allows the disease to jump from one place to another. And so you have sort of local infection, a big jump, and then more local infection. And this, you can show, is in fact a very, very nice network model. And a network where everybody's just locally connected isn't a good spread, but all you need is a couple of global connections, and now you have a way of jumping around. And so what we see is in fact the media influence on, on especially susceptible young children can be very, very strong. and coalesces with this sort of local spreading of sort of peer pressure and so on um, to form what we actually showed was the most infectious disease of our time. It's, it's even faster spreading than measles, which is quite amazing.